Hello and welcome to my channel. I'd like to introduce you to the machine standing behind me. This is a Nichols horizontal milling machine. And what makes Nichols machines different from other horizontal millers is that the head can raise and fall via this kind of seesaw mechanism. The other unique feature of Nichols millers is that the table moves via this rack and pinion. And together these two features allow the operator, after taking a cut, to return the machine back to the starting point so that a single operation could be performed on many parts one after another. This particular model is called the tool room model. In addition to the rack and pinion, it also has a hand wheel, which is the more traditional type of control for the x-axis of a milling machine table. In order for the operator to switch from using the rack and pinion control to using the hand wheel control, we need this part called the table nut. This half nut clamps to the saddle of the machine and engages with a lead screw connected to the hand wheel. When the guys at work and I were moving the machine into the shop, we dropped the machine on its side and broke the original table nut. And so in this two-part video, I'll be making a new table nut, and not just a new replacement, but an improvement on the original design. I'd like to thank a guy known on various internet forums as Doc for his guide on making this part. The one that I make here is largely based on his design. And I'm beginning the video roughly halfway through it where I've already done some of the work because I didn't decide to film all of this until I was at that point really. So here we are. We've got the uh, we've got the mill put back together as far as it will go at this point. Uh, I've left the sides off and uh, I still have the lead screw over there in the corner but we can't use the lead screw, that's the whole point of this. We're uh, making the table nut so we can use the lead screw. And right now, uh, I uh, brazed in our aluminum bronze, silicon bronze, I mean. And uh, then I just faced off the top of it on one part. Now I've got to do that for the other part. That's in place, the part is locked down, and let's take a pass. That might be all I do to this because uh, the whole point of this uh, business of milling it is so that I can uh, get the two halves flat against each other before I uh, solder them together and uh, turn and thread uh, the internal of a uh, of this area here. Here is our part now. <clears throat> and that's a good fit. There are no high spots. That's, that's all this operation was about, is to knock off any high spots, get the two uh, steel parts 
of our uh, uh, of this nut in contact with each other. Although I probably ought to take maybe one more pass to get this side knocked down as well. They're both flat. These po these parts are both uh, going to be touching each other fully, so that when I go to solder these, and then count on that solder to uh, hold both pieces while I'm, uh, you know, jamming a drill in this direction down there, that they don't split apart. Okay, and so the next thing I want to do on the mill is is just face this off, and I could have done that on the lathe too, but uh, I want to do it like this. Somewhat square, but that's fine. Not so great a finish, and not that great feeling in the hand. Alrighty. So, with the two halves together, we can now go over to the lathe. It's kind of egg-shaped because of all that I've taken off, but I gotta remember that I'll be, uh, turning this round anyway because the steel part is already too thick. And so here are the two uh, the two halves of the nut together and I'm pretty happy with uh, how close I've gotten gotten to make the fit between the two of them. Um, I'm still would like to uh, 
get some more acetylene and finish getting this, I would overfill it again and then mill it flat again, uh, just so that I could get it to look like this too. I am happy that I'm getting really not too many uh, uh, little air pockets, at least uh, on the surface of, of this here, because uh, big kind of gaps are going to become a problem when I go to thread this. And uh, and what kind of a uh, screw thread has big holes in it like that anyway? But that's it for today. Uh, I will decide on what I'm gonna do, and you'll see it in just a few. We're getting ready to uh, fill in some of this braze because we've got more gas. And now we can get it done. I don't expect to really need a whole lot of flux, but we got it. at the back. So now I'm gonna take my uh, my work piece and go quench it. Well, that's it for part one. In part two, we'll be milling the two halves flat and turning our part for our screw thread and demonstrating the finished part.